Welcome to a day out in the field collecting data with Coalition to Restore Coastal Louisiana. My name is Kat and I'm the Habitat Restoration Coordinator at CRCL. Within the last decade or since 2010, we've planted roughly a million trees and plants and enhanced over 500 acres of wetland habitat. We annually return to the sites where we've planted these trees to monitor their progress. So today we'll be taking a trip out to the Maurepas Land Bridge and we're going to go through what a typical monitoring day looks like of a past tree planting site on our end. Before we begin, I will go over how we choose our sites and give you a brief background of the site. Pre-monitoring info helps us choose planting sites with the best potential for tree survival and growth. Success of restoration plantings depends largely on identifying suitable planting locations where the soil salinity and hydrological conditions will yield good survivorship and growth rates for the vegetation being planted. We mostly plant bald cypress for our projects, and in general, the maximum soil salinity tolerated by these swamp tree species in southern Louisiana is 2.5 parts per thousand. So in other words, if the soil is too salty for the trees to survive at a site, we won't plant there. This map shows the 2018 soil salinity data from Pontchartrain Conservancy, as well as coastwide reference monitoring system stations. And as you can see, all of the samples indicated that the soil salinity was below 2.5 parts per thousand. Now we'll take a look into the history of the site. The swamps around Lake Maurepas were heavily logged in the early 1900s. The area has not fully recovered for various reasons, including lack of sediment input, the construction of the Mr. Go, the Mississippi River Gulf Outlet, which has caused saltwater intrusion, and the introduction of nutria. Throughout history, the construction of shipping channels and logging canals have allowed salt water from the Gulf to travel up these waterways into the basin, killing large areas of freshwater species that cannot tolerate the high salinity. The closure of the Mr. Go in 2009 has gradually reduced salinity, allowing freshwater species like cypress to return to the area. Our tree plantings here are helping to start the return of these coastal swamp forests. Before we begin, I'll go through our monitoring day checklist of all the equipment we're gonna need for the day. So for starters, we'll need our caliper, which is an instrument to measure internal and external dimension. So we'll always have at least one of these, if not two. We'll also have an extendable measuring stick, our clipboards and data sheets with the baseline data already printed on the sheets and room for the new data that we're gonna collect. We'll always have pencils and extra pencils. And lastly, we'll have our GPS with all of the tree points uploaded beforehand and extra batteries, of course. Monitoring our habitat restoration projects ensures that we're always learning from our work so that we can adapt and advance good practices to achieve the best restoration results possible. So let's hit the field. CRCL's Habitat Restoration Program uses two important methods to assess planting success. Before each planting, CRCL takes baseline data on 10% of the trees being planted. For our tree plantings, we assess planting success via change in tree height and diameter at breast height, or DBH. Then we'll use a GPS to mark their locations once they're in the ground. Once planted, every tree is fitted with a tree protector or nutria excluder device to prevent the sapling's roots from being eaten by these invasive rodents. The tree protectors around the monitored trees are marked clearly with fluorescent spray paint and flags because finding a particular tree a year later in the marsh can be difficult through the dense native vegetation. Lastly, each tree gets a small metal tag attached to the trunk with a number on it that corresponds to the GPS number. And after each planting, we return to the site annually to monitor the tagged trees to determine successful growth. And that's why we are here today. First, we have to use our GPS to find the monitored trees. And as I've said, we've already uploaded all of the tree points for the site beforehand. Often at times, we can see the fluorescent paint or flags on the trees and then simply check the GPS to make sure it's the correct tree. It's convenient if the metal tag is still attached to the tree, but if not, then we have to rely on the GPS to identify which tree we're looking at. 
Once we have found the tree number on the data sheet, we'll look at the baseline data taken on this same tree one year ago for comparison. Next, we'll measure tree height by placing our measuring stick next to the base of the tree and measuring how tall the tree has grown. Sometimes we'll find that our trees have been topped, meaning that the top of the trunk has been broken off, most likely by a storm event. Nonetheless, we'll still record the trunk's height in meters and note on the data sheet of any special comments like this. Lastly, we'll use our caliper to measure DBH, which again is diameter at breast height. The caliper extends and can be adjusted to fit perfectly on both sides of the trunk, giving us the exact diameter of the tree. We always use the same breast height to measure this, which we have marked on the measuring stick as 1.42 meters. Scientists come in different shapes and sizes, so having a standardized height ensures our measurements are consistent even if different people are monitoring. It's actually very exciting to finish measuring a tree and then see the difference of growth since the tree was first planted. A few seasons ago, CRCL began using aerial monitoring of our vegetation and tree restoration projects via drone surveys. We capture before and after imagery with the drone to achieve a more comprehensive analysis and bird's eye visuals. The drone connects to an app on which you can draw a polygon over the planting site. The drone will then automatically fly over the square that you programmed, ensuring it captures all of the trees in the polygon. When the trees are old enough, we will be able to analyze their progress by measuring their crown diameter from aerial imagery. Crown diameter is a measurement of how wide the canopy of the tree branches extends. Right now, these trees are really small, so we are recording baseline imagery data that will serve as a comparison as the trees grow. The combination of both methods, the drone and measuring the trees, helps the habitat restoration program track site restoration progress and make scientifically defensible decisions. And you can look forward to learning more about our aerial monitoring in an oyster reef monitoring webinar coming soon. Now I'll go through how we monitor a different type of planting. For marsh grass plantings, monitoring looks slightly different. We assess planting success via stem density, percent cover, water quality, and or soil quality parameters. We use methods outlined by the Coastwide Reference Monitoring System, CRIMS, maintained by QIPRA, USGS, and CPRA. Following a planting event, we establish monitoring plots within the planting site to collect baseline information. And then after a year's growth, we will remeasure these plots to quantify success. Over years of tree planting and monitoring, along with work by our partners at Pontchartrain Conservancy, we have obtained critical information to understand swamp restoration throughout the Pontchartrain Basin under changing environmental conditions. Our plantings in regions such as the Moripaw Swamp are not only growing into helpful storm buffers, but the establishment of the dense tree root systems will stabilize the land and help reduce the impacts from subsidence. These planted species continue to survive at a healthy rate, and hopefully we will see growth rates continue to increase in years to come. Thanks for watching, and if you want to learn more about Coalition to Restore Coastal Louisiana, you can visit our website at crcl.org.